Hello, I'm April Yvonne Garrett, and this is Amplify Baltimore. In Baltimore, there's a passionate group of veterans who are using their diverse talents to make Baltimore better. In honor of Veterans Day 2011, I am proud to bring to you One Green Home at a Time, The Sixth Branch, and The Veterans Artist Project. One Green Home at a Time combines physical renovations with social activism throughout the city of Baltimore. Its executive director is Earl Johnson, and he's here with us today. Earl, thanks for being with us. Oh, it's no problem. We are in beautiful East Baltimore in the Oliver community, but what I want to know is why you decided to move to this community and why One Green at Home at a Time in this particular neighborhood? Well, you know, East Baltimore traditionally is, is historic. Yes. Has beautiful roots, has beautiful bones, and it's just one of those communities that just says, come home, Baltimore. Mm. Just says that to you. Uh, me and my wife probably could have chose anywhere in the country to move, uh, you know, with the VA loan, uh, with our jobs. We could have been in a, a detached home with two or three acres down south. But mm. Baltimore has lost so many people. Yeah. We're a city of a million people, and now we're a city of, what, 600,000. Sure. And it just says to me as an African-American to come back to Baltimore to help restore Baltimore and to bring my family along with me. Now, where are you from originally? I'm originally from uh, the PG County area, so I'm no, I'm no stranger to, to Merlin. And we your wife? And she's from Mississippi. Uh-huh. Yeah, right. So it was a real conscious choice for you to come and, and lay roots here. Yes, yes, it was. My wife was uh, at first totally against it, mm. but as of now, she's... Um, She's my biggest fan. That's fantastic. So Earl, tell us about the mission of One Green Home at a Time. Well, One Green Home at a Time is actually um, transforming to come home Baltimore. Hmm. And it's, its primary mission is to merge physical renovation with social renovation, which is something very important to us. We want to build beautiful houses, but mm -hmm. we don't want to build prisons. We mm -hmm. don't want to build homes where people just feel as if it's so nice and it's so bad out there that I'm going to stay in the house. Yeah, so you don't want people who are just, just I've got to stay home because I don't feel like right. I can really exist in so, this community. Right, so we build great homes mm -hmm. and then we match that with social events, mm -hmm. social building, mm -hmm. green space building, mm -hmm. you name it. If it has something to do with, with people, we're in it. Well, how do you achieve that in a, in a community that has really typically been known as one of the toughest neighborhoods in the city? No fear. I mean, no, I, know, yeah. I know that sounds, you know, really uh, cliche is, but it, we, we just have no fear. Mm. We know that the community wants us here because everyone wants the community to come back. Sure. We also know that they don't trust us because we're new here. Mm. So we just, we, we keep going. We're mm -hmm. here every day. We talk to the neighbors. We, we do social events with them. We're here to show them that we're here to stay and they can trust us. And though it's a tough neighborhood, eventually we know we'll win over their hearts. Tell me why it's important to connect with the folks who were here before you came and how you're doing that. It's very important. This is their home first. Right. They have more invested in this community than, than I do. Mm -hmm. You know, for all intents and purposes, I can get up and leave tomorrow if sure. I wanted to. But a lot of people that live in Baltimore, they, they're here to stay. They've been here their whole lives. Their family's been here their whole lives. So it's very important that we reach out to them first because they are the stakeholders. And we do this by knocking on doors, mm -hmm. flowering. Mm -hmm. We do this by inviting to our events to do cleanups in green spaces. We, we try to interact with them as much as possible and let them know that, yes, we, re we recognize we're new and this is your home and we ask them permission to be involved. So there's a strong veteran component to your mission. Tell us why you chose to focus on that community outside of the fact that you and your wife are both veterans. Well, you know, veterans have a, a unique perspective. Um, just the amount of money, the amount of time, the amount of training that goes in to build a soldier is, is enormous. And, and we have a lot of skills that we've used overseas that we can also use back home. Mm -hmm. So. Baltimore's full of veterans. Thousands of soldiers come from combat and they make their home right here in Baltimore. And we want to just kind of funnel that, those people with that, those leadership skills and all that training. And we want to bring them to Oliver, move them into a beautiful house so they can use those same skills to upbuild the community right here in Baltimore. So what is a one green home like? A one green home is 
a fully renovated, fully gutted, brand new, sparkling house. I hmm. mean, it, it starts out as a shell, okay. of course. Um, like the one we're in right now? Like right, we're in right now. Okay. About 100 years old. Wow. Um, everything comes out, and we put our personal touch into it. Mm -hmm. We're talking uh, tray ceilings, recessed lightings, exposed brick, granite, hardwood floors, marble, um, special sinks for water efficiency, mm. special um, nozzles for our shower heads, tankless water heaters. We're, we're talking homes that are ready for the 21st century, ah. still has that natural Baltimore historic feel to it, mm -hmm. and also has a little bit of luxury to make you think that you got a little bit more bang for your buck. Now, how long have you been renovating these homes? Well, my company's been doing this for about 18 months. I've uh -huh. been doing this for about um, six months. I'm brand new. I'm just a baby at this. And, ah. uh, it's, been, it's, been a, it's been a ride. It's really, it's really interesting. And how many homes have you restored so far? Um, total on this street, about 23. Are you serious? Right. How many have gotten new families and have moved in? We pre-sold um, 23. You pre-sold 23? Pre-sold. So meaning that we sold the homes yeah. before we even built them. You're kidding. Right. So you have a lot of new folks that will be moving into the community with the one green home at a time. Yeah, we first. have this house. This is going to be up for sale. We're pretty sure we'll find one for this one. Uh -huh. This one's not completed yet. Mm -hmm. uh, we've we've purchased uh, 20 or 30 more homes okay. in the Oliver area. Uh -huh. We're going to try to pre-sale those, and uh -huh. then we're going to get rolling on them. What kind of folks do you think you're attracting? Everybody. This Everybody. Is, this is a very diverse um, community, so uh -huh. we, we, we really reach out to a diverse amount of people. We bring in people who have worked for the Secret Service, the mm. FBI. We bring mm. in people who live in Philly, people mm. from the South. But the, the biggest component of this is that we bring people who used to live on Barn Street mm. when it was a place full of drugs, an open drug market. Mm. And they see that it's changed around, and it's that, but once again, that we're coming home to Baltimore, we've made it so that people can come back home and live where they used to live, but in a more safe environment. Well, I've always said that it's important for Baltimoreans to respect the history and traditions of the city and our elders, but also to embrace the innovations of the new energy that's coming to the city. And you are doing such a great job with that, with one green home at a time. We can't thank you enough for sharing your vision with us today, and we can't thank you enough for amplifying Baltimore. No problem. Always amplify Baltimore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is a nonprofit organization that utilizes veterans for aggressive community service projects in local communities. Today we're here with Rich Blake, the executive director of the Baltimore branch of the Sixth Branch. Rich, thanks so much for being with us. Thanks for having me. I'm a big old fan of your work. I've been to several of your events. I love what you're doing in the Oliver community, but tell us what you're doing writ large and then how the Oliver community actually fits into your plan. Sure, well, the Sixth Branch, as you said, is. Uh, the idea is aggressive community service. So mm -hmm. the, the, the broader idea is that veterans have certain skills, uh, leadership skills, organizational skills that we learned through our military experiences, uh, through combat deployments, that if applied to community service can cut through a lot of the inefficiencies and uh, bureaucracies that some kind, sometimes slow uh, community service so projects down. that's the aggressive down. part. That's the aggressive part. Okay, got it. Uh, we like to you know, cut, basically cut through the crap and, and get to uh, the service aspect of things. I think a lot of people get caught up in, um, you know, let's have meetings and talk about these oh, problems yeah. over and over and over again. And it's sooner or later, you got to ask when is there going to be action? Absolutely. And uh, that's what we're trying, trying to change both in the nonprofit community and uh, just in the community in general. Well, I've seen you're kind of irrepressible. <laughs> you know, you, you have a big voice and I've seen how you kind of pull together volunteers from different walks of life and different organizations. Tell me why as a veteran, it's so important to share some of the military background that you have with regard to a leadership model for community service. Why is that such a critical piece to the work that you do? Well, I mean, I think it goes back to, you know, veterans that get done with their service in the military. Uh, a lot of the problems that we have in the veteran community have to do with um, not having that mission anymore, mm -hmm. not having that meaningful uh, job to do where mm -hmm. people's lives are dependent on you mm -hmm. and you feel like you're saving the world and mm -hmm. rebuilding communities abroad. That's a very, very unique experience. Sure. And um, you know, so veterans are yearning to do that, and it seems like anyone who comes in contact with us is yearning to follow that. Right. And they want to share in that experience. You know, people uh, think about combat and veteran deployments and don't really know what it what, what it is. Right. But interacting with us gives them some of that uh, 
experience indirectly, if you will. Now, I've heard people in your kind of group, your veterans group, um, talk about uh, what it was like to fight wars abroad and to kind of bring back a semblance of peace in those places that you patrol, but also coming back to get acclimated to the U.S. Tell me a little bit about how that process is and, and sort of the similarities that some of you experience abroad and at home when you're trying to be agents of change. Right, so to the first point, reintegration into mm -hmm. civilian society. Uh, first of all, it all depends. I mean, a lot of people try to generalize the veteran experience, but right. if you are an infantryman who served several combat deployments, your experience was much different than uh, somebody whose job was, you know, a po postal clerk who was stateside. Right. So it's hard to generalize the reintegration process. Right. For me, I mean, I was a, a combat veteran of the Iraq invasion mm -hmm. and got out shortly thereafter. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there is a, it's a huge adjustment. I mean, you, it's hard to go from uh, fast roping out of helicopters into combat zones to the classroom. Right. I mean, that is a, it's a huge blow to uh, your identity. Sure. So that's a hard transition. So, you know, Right now we're standing in Oliver, yes. and Oliver shares a lot of similarities with some of the places that we've seen overseas, from, in my case, Iraq. Right. And that's that, you know, the vacant homes, the, um, just the impoverished conditions that some people are living in, and the blight. Mm -hmm. And um, for us, I mean, it, it's, it's so hard to come back here and, and wonder, you know, why we're all, we went all the way over there to tackle these problems. Mm -hmm. And, and the same thing's happening here in our own city. Mm -hmm. And so we're starting to feel this movement and this, uh, this drive to do it here. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what you're starting to see here in Oliver. I can see that. But, you know, with all of the change, there has to be some challenge. Um, and I think you guys have faced some of those challenges as well. So tell us a little bit about the challenges you face when you're trying to come into a community. You have elders, you have people who've seen the community in a certain state and a lot of folks are used to that. And then when you come in with a new model, they may not be so used to that. So tell us about some of the challenges you faced and what's, what are some of the tactics that you've used to really bring about um, a sense of camaraderie with the folks who actually live here and supporting your work? Right, well, you know, the difficulty in Oliver because there are so many vacant homes mm -hmm. is uh, you can't use the traditional outreach efforts that you would in other neighborhoods. Right. So a flyer in the neighborhood right. is, you know, the the, the output you get from that is not a lot because there's so many vacant homes and you don't know who actually is getting the word. Right. Um, and then with the elderly population, they might not be up on the mainstream stuff that we're using, the Facebooks and the mm -hmm. Twitters to get yeah. the word out. Um, so that's been difficult. So, you know, luckily we have a couple allies in the neighborhood, mm -hmm. uh, the One Green Home Foundation mm -hmm. and Baltimore Born. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, a lot of the boys from Born go to Bernard Harris and right. some of the other elementary schools. Uh, around here so so through that we've been able to reach out to parents, parents and yeah. you know actually you know the mural we're standing in front of yes uh you know the, the lady lisa who uh -huh. actually uh who owns the owns the store uh -huh. her son is a marine uh -huh. it's so interesting too so charlotte lives over here and, uh -huh. and uh her husband's a veteran uh -huh. it's interesting how it all comes together yeah. but when they see us out here over and over again all of a sudden people just start coming out of their houses and and saying hey how can i help yeah um, i think that's a really important point because i think a lot of times Folks will come in, they'll do their one project, they'll leave, you never see them return. So there's no sense in those indigenous communities that you're really, really connected to what they're doing. Right, and you know, what we know about community service initiatives in general is uh, the ones that are sustainable, the ones that are work, are mm -hmm. resident driven. Mm -hmm. We know that. Right. Um, so that's what we're trying to do is get the community of Oliver to use our manpower, use our resources and say, hey, this is what we want and we'll help them. Right. Um, because we know that it has to be resident driven. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, it takes time to get the residents support because they sure. need to see that commitment. Absolutely. And that we're not just a one and off. Yeah. Um, and, and we're here, you know, as far as we're concerned indefinitely. Right. Uh, or until, you know, some of the major objectives get accomplished. What I've been impressed about with regard to the veteran community here that you're connected to, you guys have several different agendas as individual organizations, but you all work very closely together right. to achieve community service goals. So another organization that works with you all is the Veteran Artist Program, and right. I know that you are involved with that as well. Could you tell us a little bit more about what they do? Sure. So the Veteran Artist Program was uh, founded by a good friend of mine, B.R. McDonald. Good friend. Uh, he's right. also, uh, you know, part of the sixth branch, mm -hmm. and we've we kind of started coming up in Baltimore at the same time yeah. and crossed paths like very early on when we mm. were doing our outreach. Mm -hmm. And since it become just partners marching in unison. So sure. every time we do a community service project, there's mm -hmm. an art component like you see here right. uh, by veteran artists. Mm -hmm. uh, and whenever the veteran artist program has a show or something, the sixth branch provides the volunteers. That's fantastic. 
Um, so, and it's interesting how we all come together. And I think that it is that shared um, way of working that we all have. For instance, the Veteran Artist Program, the Sixth Branch, One Green Home, Semper Fidelis Health Love and Wellness. Love them. They're great. We all work together because we all have that similar "let's get this done" mm -hmm. attitude. Mm -hmm. there, there's no, there's no "let's set up a, a series of meetings to talk about this problem in the community." We just know we're going to show up and we're going to do it, and we're going to do it now. Sure, sure. We are doing this show in honor of Veterans Day. Right. Um, as you've already mentioned, there are several organizations in Baltimore. I was so impressed because I've gotten to know you guys over the past six months. One Green Home at a time, uh, Semper Fidelis, which is awesome in every way, and we're going to feature them on an indoor fitness show uh, in the wintertime. Um, your organization, the Six Brands, the Veterans Artist Program, tell me why it's important for people to understand um, the contributions that veterans have made at home and abroad, and also what would you want the people of Baltimore to think about as they're celebrating or actually commemorating Veterans Day? Right. So. What we've really been trying to do is change the conversation about mm. what it means to be a veteran. Hmm. So traditionally, Veterans Day is another day that, uh, that to honor the veterans service, uh, to appreciate the people that were part of a volunteer mm -hmm. uh, armed forces who have done things overseas, mm -hmm. to, things to keep us safe. What we're trying to do is change this attitude in the veteran community that's be, not their fault, but it's been systematic that is geared towards I don't want to say entitlement, but there's mm. this feeling of victimization that the world, mm. the community at large seems to have towards the veteran community. Mm -hmm. It's like, uh, you've done enough. Yeah. When what we really want to hear is, wait a minute, we were the people entrusted to topple foreign governments, mm. rebuild foreign nations. Why aren't you looking, us, looking to us to rebuild this community? Like, yeah. why are we being told, uh, retreat to your bar stool at the local post mm -hmm. and, and tell mm -hmm. your war stories. Right. Bring us to the table because we have the skills uh, and these, these unique experiences and perspectives to make real change in the community. So I think that, that we're going through a generational shift right now. Yeah, I can and, see that. And we, we honor those that came before us. You know, we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for them. Sure. But we would like to, to just change the whole attitude about veterans and, and let people utilize us for, for what we can do. So I want to know two things. First of all, how can veterans who may not be connected to the work you're doing get in contact with you? I know you guys are, Six Branch is sort of like an umbrella in a way because you kind of connect everybody. So why don't you tell them how they can get in contact with you? Uh, you know, the best way is the website. So mm -hmm. www.thesixthbranch.org. Okay. Uh, and that's using the numeral. So the six, T-H, branch.org. Okay. Um, you know, shoot me an email, shoot, mm -hmm. me a, shoot me a phone call. I respond extremely quickly and yes, efficiently. Yes, you do. I can, I can attest to that. Um, and then the second one is to civilians. What would you like them to know with regard to how they can work with veterans and partner with veterans? Because I know, especially with the Veteran Artist Program, they are working with artists who are veterans, but also connecting them with the greater society. Right, and, and that's another shift that we're trying to go through is uh -huh. the traditional, what they call veteran service organizations, or VSOs, mm -hmm. have traditionally been exclusive, mm -hmm. you know? And we think that that hinders reintegration. Yeah. It's, it's isolation, which sure. is the opposite, right. which is why for the sixth branch, you'll always see that a majority of our volunteer base is civilians. Right. And for the veteran art artist program, a big thing that we do is pair artists who are veterans who might have mm -hmm. missed their window to be a professional artist. Oops, sorry. We pair them up with you know, civilian artists who have mm -hmm. been in the business and have been working these things out when they didn't have the opportunity right. to. Right. Uh, and it, it's all about collaboration. It's mm -hmm. not about, uh, you know, we are somehow special and above because we've served. Uh -huh. It's we just want to share what we've done and we want to we want to share with them, you know, what they have and, and just do positive things. Well, I've seen you do a really good job of being structured enough and creating the space for people from all walks of life to come in and do this work. You've worked with colleges and universities, you've worked with other nonprofit organizations, and you've worked with um, businesses who want to come in and do this work. So I think your model of saying we're not going to talk, we're going to be about the action um, is one that anybody who's watching this show can benefit from when they're thinking about how to do community service. So I thank you so much for your witness. I thank you so much for your service, not only abroad, but here in Baltimore. And I thank you for the ways, many, many ways that you guys always amplify Baltimore. Thank you, April. And more veterans in action when we return to Amplify Baltimore.
a Coppin State University student in the class of 2013, and she's also a volunteer here today at Operation Oliver. Kelly, thanks for joining us. Thank you. You are a Baltimore native. Tell us where you were raised. I was raised on North Avenue in Bentlow. Okay. Raised in Florida from here. Uh huh. And then you returned to attend Coppin State University. Yes, I did. Tell me why you came out to Operation Oliver today to support all of the work that the veterans are doing in East Baltimore. Okay, um, I'm a part of Student Volunteer Corps. Okay. And they told me come out and you know come out and let's get like this party going and get the stuff cleaned up. So I was like, hey, no problem. I'm all about getting clean. So. Did you know that this program was attached to an effort that veterans were doing in East Baltimore? Yes. Once I got the flyer, I received it, and I was like, okay, cool, let's go out. And let's what did you think about that? Because that's not something that you typically get. You might have a nonprofit organization or you might have a city-based uh, agency that's doing this type of work. What do you think is special about this being kind of a veteran-centered operation? Um, you know, it's, it's not a lot of operations that's like going out that's doing things for people, you know, basically for the veterans. It's mm -hmm. like a, a lot of nonprofits going on, so I really haven't heard anything about veterans. Mm -hmm. Like throughout my volunteering, you know, uh -huh. career, I never heard about veterans. Uh -huh. So I was like, okay, this seems pretty cool. Now, how often do you volunteer during the year? Oh my gosh, I've been volunteering forever. Like okay. when I was living in New York, I volunteered for all different types of organizations. Um, I also started my own organization volunteering, you know, helping out with kids in my neighborhood. Okay. I lived in the Bronx, so okay. it's been a long time. <laughs> Tell me what you hope to accomplish today. Oh, I didn't know what we were actually doing today, <laughs> but uh, whatever is necessary that we're supposed to be getting done today, I'm ready just to get it done. Well, Kelly, I know you have to get back to work because there are projects to be attended to, but thank you so much for coming back to Baltimore and attending the wonderful Coppin State University, and thank you for amplifying Baltimore. Thank you for having me, April. Oh, oh, oh. veterans organizations working to make Baltimore better. Today we introduce you to two of them. This Veterans Day I hope you will remember their efforts at home and abroad and we hope you will always continue to amplify Baltimore. Remember, we the people of Baltimore possess all we need to make our city thrive. With every thought, word, and action, each of us has the power to create the city we want. With this power, I hope you will always choose to amplify Baltimore. Oh, 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 oh,